Welcome to the Altoa for Restaurants basic dealer training. I'd like to dive right in and show you the simplicity of the software. Really starting with the cashier in process. When you go to cashier in, you simply click cashier in button, enter in the access code, select a cash tray you'd like to count in, and begin entering in the denominations. Um, this simply, if you have one $100 bill, to $50 bills, three $20 bills, you'll notice that the system is doing the calculations automatically for you. You don't need to do the math. Um, and it's adding up right here at the very bottom of the screen. Once you've completed your cashier in process, you simply hit finish. It'll ask you if the money count is finished. Answer yes. And you're ready to begin. When you go to cash her out at the end of the day, enter in your access code, select your cash tray, and you'll notice the screens look exactly the same. So this helps reduce the amount of time needed for training. If you happen to be short, the system will come up and give you information about the discrepancy and give you a chance to put in an explanation. That explanation will be found on the closing reports as well as the register activity reports at the end of the day. When cashiered in, you can go into the dine-in, take-out, delivery, or drive-through options. Simply click on the button, enter in your access code, choose the uh, selection type. In the case of dine-in, I have an options for table selections. I have a variety of table selections here on the side that I can choose as well as hostess options right here. I'm going to go ahead and select a table here. It'll prompt me for the number of guests. I can then start my order entry process. Now, the order entry process is very simple. We have your menu groups here on the side. We have menu items right here in the middle of the screen and your ticket here on the right side. Now, if I click here at the top, you'll see a series of action keys. This one currently says Dine In, and if I click on it, it allows me to change to a different order type. You'll notice when I change order types, some of the buttons do change of what's available to me. So, in this case, I'm going to Delivery Order Type, and it's going to prompt me for my name and information. If I go back to the uh, dine-in order type, it'll prompt me for a table selection. In the selection here, if I want to order a menu item, I simply click on the menu item, click on the modifiers, and it'll appear here on the right-hand side. When I click Done, it will print to the kitchen. I also have a variety of options here across the bottom that are allowing me to make a variety of point-of-sale choices, such as void, reorder, hold, split, combine, half, look at the details of the item, choose a quantity when ordering, discount my items, surcharges, or if I need to apply a credit. I can also have uh, pay keys here, so like in this case I'm going to settle my order, it'll take me to a settlement screen, or I can either choose my type of electronic payment or my cash payments. In my case, I'm just going to hit cash, and you'll see you get a, quick, a variety of payment options here. And we're going to go ahead and settle out. Now my ticket would automatically print to the kitchen, and we're ready to go forward. In the recall screen, you'll actually be able to recall orders based on all types, dine-in types, bar tabs, uh, takeout, drive-through. I can even look at historical information and go back and see information from any day that I'd like to choose. In the driver section, this allows me to review and dispatch my drivers. Um, in delivery status, I can see what orders are out and for who. I can void items. I can go directly into settle screens from uh, and look up orders and settle them that are already made. No sale will pop my cash tray. I can do paid outs refunds, uh, generate in-store credits, sell gift cards, cashier in and out, 
Um, the Pro Edition does have time cards built in. I'm simply entering your access code. In this case, I need to clock in like that. Um, if I go back in here, I can clock out or do my breaks. And you'll notice the clock in button disappears because I'm already clocked in. The stay button will allow me to stay in this screen as I click through buttons. I can view my schedule, set a pager. Um, if you have the access uh, authority, you can edit time cards, view earnings reports, or simply hit close. The operations section of the software allows you to quickly look at a variety of different options inside the software. Things that are dealing with your payments, revenue, frequent diner, in-house charges, inventory activities. Other tools give you a variety of reporting options as well as um, options for media center integrations. And of course, Done exits that section. The back office gives you a variety of powerful tools um, and contains your settings sections. These settings allow you to adjust store level settings, security settings, uh, station settings, as well as do basic maintenance for the system, such as change your data source, compact your database, back up your database, or pay employees. You can also do some um, typical tasks back here, such as maintain your in-house charge accounts or receive inventory items directly from this screen. Now the system does automatically set you up with a demo database. Um, to change data sources or create your own, simply click on data source, acknowledge the warning message, and create new blank database. And click the checkbox here to give your database a name. Once you give a database a name, you'll need to pick your station store settings information, starting off with your postal code, your city name, the state, once done, it'll take you to a screen to validate that information, as well as make any store settings changes you feel necessary. When you're done there, click done. It'll then prompt you to set up your station settings. Station settings are specific to this station and include things like setting up your, your cash trays or your printers. Once you've set up your information here, simply click done and you're ready to move forward. To set up a menu item, you would go to setup, menu setup, and you need to start off by creating menu categories. These are the reporting categories for your items. Uh, typically, they're going to be things like food, beverage, but they can be anything you'd like. Once you've set up your uh, menu categories, you need to set up your menu groups. Menu groups are typically going to be things like appetizers, entrees, and are going to work with the flow of the menu. Um, for our purposes, I'm just going to do an appetizer section here. You can pick where you, in the screen you'd like those to appear. You can also set up any type of picture or colors you'd like on those buttons, as well as decide what uh, service is going to be available when and if there's going to be a default order group. I'm going to go ahead and close that. Once you've created your menu groups, you're ready to start creating menu items. When you go to items, it will list your groups down the left hand side and give you a grid to the right. You can pick any button in the grid and start creating your menu items. Simply give your item a name. Choose the category and give it a default price. You can also choose which printer you'd like to send this to. In my case, we're going to send this directly to Kitchen. As well as any taxes that may need to apply, any variance that happens in the price per order type, uh, any secondary language items. There's also a variety of operations here to account for almost any type of serious operation in a 
uh, restaurant. When you've created your item, simply click Save and Done, and that item will appear in your menu. If you're using a mouse, by simply right-clicking on that item, you can move it to a new location in the grid, anywhere you'd like. That simple. Now some menu items will have modifiers for those. To create a modifier, simply click on your menu item and choose, does this need to be a forced modifier or is this going to be part of a menu modifier template? A forced modifier will give you up to seven levels of choices and means you must make a choice and typically is going to be uh, only one choice that's made per level. Typical things that you would do for a forced modifier might be temperature of an item. So if I wanted to create a new item, I'd simply click the little paper down here and I could create things like medium and hit save. Click new. I can make it medium rare. Well done. Etc. And once I've chosen those, I can check in the ones that I'd like to appear on my menu and click done. I now have a drop down here that shows all of the items that are going to be available for, for level one. And so when I order my barbecue beef, I'm immediately going to be presented with temperatures for my item. Now I can also uh, create a variety up to seven levels here. And again, this works great if you have a situation where you need to make just one choice. But what if you had a situation where you need to make multiple choices? Well, that's where a modifier builder template comes in. And simply click on the little paper down here. Give your modifier builder template a name and click save. This will give you a variety of uh, options here and you can rename these buttons. Uh, for mine, we're going to call this um, beef. So maybe I have beef cuts or beef types that I need to make. I'm going to click on the button here to make choices. And you're going to see I get a grid just like we had last time. And I can click on the, the grid here and enter in anything I'd like. So maybe I have different cuts of beef that I'd like to make. When I get through with this, I would actually have a grid here of the multiple choices that I'd have. And if you attach this to an item, I could actually order the item and have a list of choices that I could have for that item. This is particularly helpful for things such as sandwiches, uh, pizzas, calzones, anything where multiple choices might be made. When done, do you remember where it says use modifier builder template to choose it from the drop down? A modifier builder template can be assigned to more than one item. Once you've created a variety of menu items, you're also going to need to go through and investigate the rest of the setup. General setting items are going to create things such as store settings, which is the same as the button here, security settings, which is the same as the button here, station settings, which is the same as the button here. You can start setting up postal codes and delivery streets for areas that you're doing delivery. I can create cash trays. Remember, you do need to create a cash tray for each station. You can do this in the back office. I can set up surcharges and discounts here. I can start looking at my bad check information and start setting those up if I need to. We do allow for custom printer information if you do have uh, printers that may not be listed on our setup, as well as the creation of tax tables. In the table section, table groups and dine-in tables allow you to create your tables. An employee section allows you to actually create your employees and give them access codes. Menu setup, we've already gone through the basics here. An inventory setup allows you to create your inventory. Now much of this will be created in other videos um, for more detailed information. We hope this video is helpful in getting you a quick start to using and understanding the Adobe point-of-sale software. Thank you.